blow our minds. Thank you. I would like to clarify that today we are going to be talking about the contribution of data to the digital transformation of the state. This perspective will be one of implementation strategies on open data. All levels of government have a specific orientation, and now how do we put in place these government strategies? These are things that we are going to discuss today. We know that open data is important. There are a lot of strategies on digital transformation, and we need to harmonize all of these experiences so that there is a certain coherency, a coherence rather, in our transformation, our digital transformation. And we know that it's not easy. We've seen that from the beginning of the summit. There's more and more importance placed on open data. It's not a new issue, but it is something that's gaining momentum. We've also seen the benefits that this can have at different levels. When data is open and is used properly, and we saw examples of positive initiatives, and we'll see more today. And for public administrators, this requires work and significant change. And we know that when data is created, it's not necessarily created to be open, not because we didn't want to transfer it, but it wasn't part of the management paradigm. And when data is opened, it leads to certain challenges. And this is what we're going to be talking about today with our three guests. And we are pleased to have with us the three levels of government. So I will introduce our panelists to you. And then I will go into my questions and we'll respond to them. So we have with us Véronique Dufort, who works in urban planning in Montreal. And she works on the data strategy, the open data strategy of Montreal. She has a certain expertise in urban planning and other things. We also have Dennis Skinner, who is executive director of digital change for the government of Canada. He was at the head of many initiatives with different departments linked to digital and technological transformation. So he also has great expertise to talk about open data. And finally, we have Pierre Rodrigue, who is Associate Secretary at Digital Trans Transformation. And so he has a lot of knowledge. He worked for the provincial government for 30 years in different roles. And he is training in law, and he worked in different departments as well. His role often had to do with digital transformation, with employment and social solidarity. There were strategic policies that created web services. And so we'll talk about all of these things today. Welcome to our panelists. We'll have a very diverse panel of experts because all of the all of the different levels of government have different data and we'll see how it is used. Let's start with Pierre. So I'll ask you the first question. How do you see the digital transformation and what is your strategy for deploying it while keeping in mind open data? Thank you. Mr. Caron, our vision of digital transformation is part of our 2019 to 2023 strategy, and we want to make things simple. As you've stated, I've been working for the Quebec government for over 30 years, and I understand that for people, it can be difficult receiving government services. So the digital transformation is important. We need to review our procedures, the way that we offer services before we digit digitize all of this. And we need to simplify things. And sometimes that means removing these 
ways of doing things. We need to be able to offer services without a person needing to ask for them. And in order to do so, data and data management are very important. For those who read Bill 95 adopted last June, it modifies the Act on Data Management, and that shows the importance that we place on data management. We created a role for that in our government. It is absolutely fundamental in our digital transformation. We need to be able to manage data. We need to have the mechanisms and the means necessary to use data that public organizations have in order to simplify services to citizens. We want them to be intuitive and not complicated for people to use. Thank you, Monsieur Rodrigue, Monsieur Dufar. Apologies. We'll probably have a similar perspective on digital transformation. We're in a digital revolution and technology is found in all aspects of our lives. We need to ensure that using new technologies respects fundamental rights of our citizens and is used towards common good. Technology and data is a means to improve our services to citizens and improve our quality of life. And at a municipal administration, it's very interesting to look at the potential of tools because we have such a wide range of possibilities to improve services in different municipalities. We look at security and safety and residual matter. It has concrete implications. So we have different ways to find solutions for those services, but there are also risks. We could, for example, uh, have these surveillance mechanisms that are not necessarily necessarily have bad intentions, but they have risks. In Montreal, we have a strong digital leadership. I'm not talking only about the city, but especially about all the different ecosystems that gravitate to around digital uh, means. Montreal is a center of uh, research and art AI. We have a lot of startups. All of these players get together and have a vision and an orientation. In our strategies, We, I see four strategies that are interesting, first of all. Montreal 2030, a new strategy we've delivered a year ago. It's a strategic plan that confirms the orientations for Montreal. These orientations were uh, done in consultation with uh, the population. I'll name you all these orientations so we'll accelerate uh, trans, uh, eco ecological trans, uh, transition, improve democracy, stimulate innovation and creativity, among others. All these digital actions need to go in that direction. We've also created Mon uh, Digital Montreal or Montre Montreal Numérique. This helps us prioritize our actions, our actions in Montreal on in the digital realm, what's unique with Montreal 2030 is the fact that we want to bring the human, human aspect to the digital world. 
Montrealers need to feel like they're part of it. It's hard to go get them. So we find new ways to bring them in the discussion. And we always are listening to their needs. I work in data at the city of Montreal. We develop strategies and data is at the heart of those. The digital transformation are everywhere. It's essential that we have mechanisms to uh, to to do this. We'll come back in details to that. We're talking about open data, and it has a bit to do with what Mr. Rodriguez mentioned about Bill 95. It will create a new ecosystem. You're talking about an ecosystem with partners, this digital transformation changed our ways of doing things. Mr. Skinner, how's what, what's happening at the federal level, uh, government level? In the government of Canada, our vision is that each person can access any federal government service at any time from any uh, tool. So we want to modernize how we're managing project we want to create platforms and government systems that allow Canadians to use easily the the systems and for people that use government services they won't have uh, paper forms things will be easy to find and they won't need to stay forever on the phone to get information. Also, there will be ways to quickly identify these people. The implementation of this vision is done with our 2021-2024 plan that we've published on the online. So we have our plan for the next three years. These standards were created openly along with uh, stakeholder groups. We can better serve Canadians. That's our vision. And so that they can have access to our to what, what they need at any time. I'd like to remind participants that they can use the chat to send questions. And I will later ask those questions to our panelists. Moving on, there's a digital transformation strategy at all government levels. There's a common vision, which is uh, going for the uh, citizens. What's the contribution of open data to this initiative the question is interesting. We all always need to keep in mind that our citizens uh, or the Quebecers that are served by the Quebec government are the same ones that are served by the city of Montreal, and they're also Canadian. So they're served by the federal government. The open data allow us to have more collaboration at different government levels so that everyone can move to uh, the digital realm. Digital data is, or open data is only part of the data we have by creating a job on uh, digital data in the government, there will this person will see what data is available, ensure what the quality of that data is, have some protection as well, because some data can be shared and others can be easily published. Depending on what we're looking for, You'll see in our act, we'll be able to designate organizations that become uh, data 
sharing or broadcasting groups. This way, we'll have private partners that will develop services that we hope will be coherent with the digital offer from the government. We want to do this in Quebec for uh, digital identity. We want to have a, like we're dealing with a vaccine uh, passport right now. We'd like to have interactions between public data and private uh, data so that there can be these private services. Private enterprise and other government levels need to have access to our government's data and they need to be able to rely on that data. On Donny Québec's website, we have data sets from different uh, government levels. We, could we have more? Of course. We could have more useful data, but we first need to know what is available. We need to make sure that it's of uh, quality data and that it's also well protected. Some information or some data cannot be shared for those reasons. This allows us to ensure that there's a Quebec digital transformation and these this data is going to be very useful. What you're saying is that open data is at the heart of the digital transformation strategy. We're ambitious. Data needs to be given back to uh, Quebecers with their they're paying uh, taxes for gener to generate that data, so it's so it's a good thing that data is going back to Quebecers for uh, their own good. We always want to offer services to our citizens. This is one of the. Uh, objectives of that, yes. I will move on to other questions. You'll have a data manager that's integrated to the uh, transfer transformation team. Yes, I have this title, but someone on my team will do the work. We have to thank uh, like we have to be thankful that I won't be the one doing this work. You've already gone on this, but can you continue what you were saying on data? Yes, data is, has a key role, but it's by sharing this data that we'll be able to uh, make it most useful. Open data seeks to open up a window on the city to make collaboration easier to do so that the city is not caught in a silo. There are all these ecosystems I was talking about earlier. Community needs to uh, take part in uh, creating the city of tomorrow. The uh, raw materials for moving forward are data. By definition, governments are not as nimble as they would want to be. It's not our role. Actually, we're supposed to be keeper of the public interest. We need to consult. We need to create different orientations with our uh, population. There's in universities and in business, there's a lot of interest. We need to use their expertise to add value. On, in our day-to-day -day life, there's Sophie from Transit that talked about her tools that are used, their tools that are around, used around the world. 
it's supported by a municipal and federal governments data we publish data and that data is used to improve uh, citizens quality of life we're during an election there's a lot of data uh, municipal elections are coming soon the best uh, maps are made by the are uh, created by media but use by using our data on writings and all that that's why we need to so that shows how we can use that data is a public good i use it everyone uses it and we can use it a, uh, in a way that anyone can, like everyone can use it in their own way without taking something away from them what is the contribution of open data earlier i've mentioned as uh, data standards and how we can include them in the digital transformation one of these standards says that we should be work in an open way by default during the pandemic this is more important than ever there's research on decision making that can be done with that we should treat that the same way as open uh, source code we can change our processes and the way we collaborate with the open data for example in the security team that was we worked with email but if everyone including the security team could have access to the code they could contribute to the code so there might be processes that are not needed working in an open way gives us a way to be more efficient the example that i've given you has to do with the code but we need interoperability a code for open data between jurisdictions would help us uh, deliver services for example we should ask an authorization for data access it could you could waste a lot of time on this but that data has already been published and it's not classified it would be redundant to add an extra process to protect this data so that we can then share them if the data has already been shared in an open way we're reducing a lot of internal processes for uh, sharing we need to reduce uh, our manual tasks so that we can automate as many things so that this data can be reused we need to have better processes thank you i'm seeing that there's will be possibilities to work between governments not only between uh, departments but having uh, accessible data will allow all governments to work together a long time ago for those who are older you'll remember the blue pages there was one there were the provincial municipal and uh, federal blue pages and when you're looking for a pool whether it's of any jurisdiction i just want to go swim citizens are looking for a uh, one window approach what are the main challenges for open data mr rodrigue They're of different uh, nature. There's the legal aspect. Our colleague at the City of Montreal has mentioned that. Protections of different types of data are in uh, regulations. It can be complex depending on the type of data we have. It can be hard to anonymize 
or get some value that can be uh, um, worthwhile to broadcast or to share while protecting private information. Protecting private information is very essential in Quebec, just like for other groups. The second challenge, and I will say in a candid way, we need to have um, up-to-date inventory of data we have in Quebec. I don't know how it's like for other levels of government, but when we talk to people from other jurisdictions, it's a challenge for most governments to know exactly what data they have. That's the first uh, thing that the uh, digital data manager will do. We want to make sure that our citizens give information that they've already given prior when they're applying for a new service. So once the state has asked for that uh, data once, then that information will be available for everyone. This way we can use the data we have by having an inventory of data, we'll be able to identify what we can share and uh, what can be brought forward for the transformation of the ecosystem. The ecosystem could uh, make, add like a plus value to it. So it could be put forward either by another level of government the third challenge is the quality of data that's as in anything else at some point it's one thing to have the data but that it has to be of quality over time we accumulate data that's perhaps more up to date more complete and so we need to make sure that that data is of good quality and it needs to be appropriately qualified so that we can open data at the right time. And then with the technology that we have, it should be fairly easy to make it available. And just to summarize, there are some legal matters. We need to understand these issues and identify them in order to make the data open. But that was our main goal. We want the data to be used inside government. And we also don't want to have too many databases because the more databases we have, the more we need to protect them. Because we live in a world of cyber threats and cyber attacks. So the more data we have to protect, the more complicated it is. And of course, it's costly. Maintaining these security measures is costly because we have a responsibility toward citizens. But as you can see, Bill 95 is a clear signal that the government of Quebec reacted and gave itself the means by having a chief information officer and so they gave themselves the means to do this, uh, to implement all this responsibly. And so in doing so, we'll be able to open more data. So this brings a certain rationalization. We, all, we talk about of course, how it's a security matter, but also we need to know if the data is of good quality. And Monsieur Rodrigue, you mentioned the matter of interoperability. 
there need to be technical issues that need to be resolved to ensure this horizontality, this data sharing. Ms. Dufa, what are the main challenges for you? There are many challenges and that's good news because we have good teams and it'll give us work to do for a long time to come. We are working on an action plan that we want to deploy and through this action plan, and this is something that was mentioned before by our MC earlier, there's a significant issue, which is the democratization of data. We want this data to be used. We want it to be attractive to people. We don't, we don't want it to be a niche issue. We have the possibility to be a big team, but working with municipalities and smaller municipalities for things to work, we need to put in more resources. And in order to do so, we need increased interest. We need to interest. We need to be able to do more to make the data of better quality. So this is something that we're constantly working at. In Montreal, there was a challenge. And in 2015, we published a document on open data, so open by default. And we've been working hard since then to open all of our data, but it's proven to be more challenging than we expected. We want to maintain openness by default, but our, we want our data to be open with a goal to meet the needs of our citizens. And then that brings about another issue. How do we know what the needs are for our citizens? We need to find some forums in order to examine the priority needs. Of course, there are issues such as COVID that give us a clear, a clear idea, but there are some that aren't so clear. And to go back to what my colleague said from Quebec, we published a charter of digital data in Montreal, and we highlighted the importance of using data properly throughout its life, throughout its life cycle and maintain its security and see its use. There are challenges with the protection of privacy. And as we open data, it might allow linkages to be made with social media, and that raises other problems. And we're working with universities to examine this challenge. There's work to do. and. We'll go back to the table to improve our data. And we need to be aware of new trends, new technologies. Things change so quickly. And we need to ensure that we protect people's privacy. We need to be vigilant regarding the collection of personal data. And we talk about understanding the needs of our people, but we need to know them. And in order to do so, we need to collect more personal data. But at the same time, we want granular data. We don't want to share too much. So it's finding the middle ground. And data might not always be open. Sometimes we're talking about data partnerships and the use of data. Our organizations and municipal, municipal administrations, provincial and federal administrations, we want everything to be made available, but that's not possible for everyone. There are private organizations and entities that have so much information, but they need to find that balance. We need to find the proper mechanisms to share data. And it's a big challenge that we still need to take on. Thank you. 
And that brings us back to that idea of a life cycle of data. Data is like cats. They have, it has many lives. It can be reused and re-exploited and creates new data with 5G and AI. It will raise new challenges as well. And we'll need to take these into consideration, but this is this is such interesting work, but there are rules to follow. And these are probably the main challenges of the different administrations. And what are the main challenges for you? Monsieur Rodrigue Monsieur talked about the legal implications and the quality of data and what Ms. Dufour said on democratization of data is important. Open by default is not easy, and we need to be reminded of that. And we will continue working on the Federation of Open Data. It's an important point in our discussions today, and it's important for discoverability and for improving access to citizens. COVID-19 highlighted the importance of open data so that we could follow up on the pandemic and it highlights the importance of data. The government wants to make data readily available and open. An example of this is vaccination rates. There's a need for open data and it needs to be published responsibly with a clear goal. In the future, we will continue to assess needs and make data sets, relevant data sets available. However, one of the main challenges that we've noticed is the externalization of data with the different departments and the different levels of government to allow data linkages. That's the case, for example, on a data set on COVID-19 because it, di it differs from one administration to another. So that's a challenge and for interoperability as well. It's a key concept that we'll have to continue to work on. Thank you very much. And all, all this is linked. And there's a question here. Are universities a part of these projects? And if so, how? Mr. Rodrigue. Well, while working on Bill 95 and in discussions with the Inter-University Office, we were committed to work with universities because there are specificities in universities that work on research projects and who does the data belong to the, the professor the organization that's funding the research in universities and in research there's a level of complexity and the last thing that we want to do with the cio is to have mobility or valorization strategies that are just going to be a brick wall when we work with universities we are going to sit down with the different organizations to see how can we can how we can adapt our strategies to the realities of universities it will be the same in health for example and social services this is a sector that contains a lot of data but a lot of that data needs to be protected, and I don't need to tell you why. But there's some data that can be quite interesting for public health, for example. And I'm not talking about selling data to pharmaceutical companies. We're not there because Bill 95 is mainly a bill that focuses on the value of data and the interoperability of it. But coming back to your question, we are committed to working with universities to find a model 
that will be well adapted to their activities very well. We know that researchers are big consumers of data. And what you've highlighted is so important. There are so many illegal issues on ownership and how to protect data, how do people have access to it? These are fundamental questions. And so there's work ongoing in order to frame how things can be done. Yes, universities, universities create data, but they also consume a lot of data. And I can say this very candidly, some of our issues with having access to, to data has to do with access to government data for different legal and technological reasons. Sometimes it's just hard to find the data. This is what we would like to solve with our new system. We want researchers to have easier access to data and create value added to this data. And we want the research data to be more readily available and accessible as well. It's so interesting. But as you all know, it's a complex world. Ms. Dufault, do you work with universities? Yes, at many levels, in fact. They are part of our strategies. Our digital data charter is something that we worked on with academia. We worked with Nicolas Merveille from the Université de Québec à Montréal. And we were also able to communicate with different networks because they are the big thinkers and we want to ensure that what we're doing works and we are open to criticism from academia. So yes, they are a part of our strategies. And also what's important is that we are working with academia Our successors are trained in universities. So we try to participate in classes when we're asked to do so. Some, we try to go when we can. Obviously, we're not a thousand people here. So we try to share the good news with future users who will increase the value of this data. Regarding research projects now, of course, we communicate directly with people and we try to respond to requests for projects as much as we can. We are in open communication with the city and a lot of people that communicate with us are part of academia. And academia also helps us to prioritize what data to open. And another thing that's quite interesting is how to ensure that we are receiving university data in an open data sphere. This is a challenge still because universities create so much data and there are so many projects ongoing and university projects with the city of Montreal, well, eventually we'd like to publish that data, but there are studies that are not with the city of Montreal and if the data is being put online, it needs to be available to everyone, but without, but we want to have a filter to ensure that the data has to do with Montreal. I would love to see a website for the city of Montreal, an open data academic website that is on the same level as the city's website. I think I was disconnected, perhaps for a moment. I found what you said very interesting. 
What was the you were saying about that about websites at the end? We were hoping to have an academic website through the Montreal Research Center. We want that to happen. We want more university data without the Montreal filter. We want to see data that perhaps we don't agree with, but that needs to be put in the public sphere to, to challenge us as well. I think we lost uh, Professor Caron again. I think we were moving on to opportunities for Mr. Skinner, if you want to speak. Yep, go ahead. I have another angle to offer about working with universities. As a, an employer in Canada, we want to include data in university programs. And with digital standards for the government of Canada, we received comments from students and teachers throughout Canada, but also internationally. So we co-created our strategies and our standards. We work with academia in order to co-create what will be the future of data. I apologize. I think I'm having some connection issues. I might disappear yet again, but thank you so much. This is the fruit of our labor in opening data. Everyone will be able to have different opinions and will be able to debate this. And there's work done at the university level for data to be usable between researchers. Usually we tend to keep our data for ourselves, but now we are requesting that this data be open so that it can be used and consulted with the proper criteria. And it's a good point that you've raised. Last question. How do you see the next steps for uh, data opening? Mr. Rodrigue? The next steps, they are linked to what I've mentioned earlier. At our Center of Excellence in Quebec, that's responsible for open government. They're working on that. There is more than ever with the government of Quebec, an appetite for open data. We've been talking about it for a long time, at least since the early 2000s. It started rather slowly. Now we've reached uh, a better rhythm. It's not our, uh, we're not at full speed yet, but we're building expertise at our center of excellence. We have very good specialists working with us. We want to continue to collaborate with the community at large and all uh, levels of government. Not only data is open, but our organization is open towards other organizations. Next steps are work that will start soon for the manager of uh, digital data that will help us uh, move forward. I think we've lost uh, Professor Caron again. Madame Dufour, thank you. In Montreal, I've mentioned it earlier, we have an action plan we want to launch it we want to work with the community we want to find new communication channels 
for the democratization of this data were supported by Montreal 2030. It's a strategic orientation. This is a great thing. We also have uh, a lot of uh, organizational priorities in the digital realm. Also, I'm part of the laboratory of uh, urban innovation, so we are agents of change. We need to take advantage of that. We want to experiment on a smaller scale to then deploy, notably the Montreal in Common project. That's the next step for the uh, smart city project. We want the city and we want to have uh, partnerships with uh, the private sector. What, what can we do with mobility, knowing that we're not the only one who hold data? We need to do better and have better solutions that are useful. Also, for next steps, we're sh um, we want to have more collaboration. Our organizations have worked hard to create this summit. Now we've established collaborations that need to continue on and grow. That's part of the next steps. You've talked about experimenting. That's how a lot of the next steps, whether it's a provincial, municipal, or other, we need to experiment because it's a new field. We need to be bold. Mr. Skinner, next step. I agree with experimenting. We need to start with smaller projects, see which ones work, and then invest in those and make them grow. It's okay if projects fail, if we keep them small. We will consider open data with uh, provinces, territories, and cities. Interoperability is essential. When I'm thinking about one day we might have a common dictionary for our data sets, for example, for dates and provincial and territory codes and others, we'll can you collaborate with our international partners to see what Canada is doing well and to learn from countries that are ahead of us in some fields. We can see what we can integrate in what we do in Canada. So we want to pursue our international uh, collaboration, but we also want to work on interoperability so that we can offer better services. This interoperability will allow a more opening or openness by connect, being able to connect with others. Are there data sets or situation where the sale of data could be done? In the US, it's been done in some ways, for example, for the um, for, um, marine topography. Could that the sale of data be considered in some situations, Mr. Rodrigue? We'll need to ask ourselves, it's a delicate of a sensitive nature. Last spring, it was mentioned publicly. We still need to look into that for now. With Bill 95 and its implementation, we're still trying to see how we can better use data for public services and to uh, do, it, do things better internally within the parameters that we have right now. Right now, there are no projects to sell data to private to the private sector we need to study these issues so it would be free and for everyone for now what what for the city 
No, we don't have any projects of data sales. Actually, we want to open more data. The strategy indicates that the DG uh, is a guardian of that data, but it's data from the citizens. We need to give back to that data when there are limits on what we can share. It, they're not financial limits, but it's to uh, respect the rules in place. We want to move forward with more openness So we want to be able to give some data or find partnerships or frameworks that allow us to share information that's not as open, but at least could help us reach um, full potential, notably with uh, Montreal in common. Mr. Skinner, we've had this discussion many years ago. Should we have pay it's an investment creating data is an investment and it has value so who's uh who owns that value in the government of canada the, the data is available to anyone we need to ask ourselves who was this prepared by so it's a civic good how can we share as much by protect while protecting private information in a data set, we could see that. So we can keep a balance. What can we uh, share? How much can we share while protecting private data? So we're out of time. So first of all, I'm sorry about uh, leaving a few times. I'd like to thank you for this great discussion that shows that there are challenges, that things are moving forward. There are challenges with transformation. So we need to create this link. You've uh, talked about a lot of advantages and challenges that will you're going to be facing in different org your different organizations. There's a lot of potential for the future within each jurisdiction, but also between jurisdictions. I think that's very interesting. I'll thank all three of you and uh, good luck.